guys we are back the day after the last day which you saw I had a good we had a good day on the circles yesterday didn't we there's a lot of good conversation if you don't know about the circles just a little plug here the circles is um, a ongoing conversation that we have on the telegram app uh, it's myself Jay Cutler Flex Lewis Jose Raymond and an, and a, um, an array of your favourite professional bodybuilders Evan Senapani Juji Mufu's in there Lee Priest. I can't have to say everyone now. Guy Sistanino, Chris Tuttle, Frank McGrath. Frank McGrath, Antoine. So all your favorite people. I don't think I've missed out anyone. I've said Guy. Two guys. All right, so um, anyway, on there, um, we discuss a lot of things about bodybuilding, business, personal stuff. Um, one of the latest videos that actually was put online that I did was a response to a, a clip from Circles, which was a video discussing my opinion on the Olympia. Uh, the backstage area um, so the circles is a place where you want to hear some very personal things if you want to know our opinion on things and you want to like get to know us all and that includes like I say Jay Cutler and people like that we will speak very openly and freely on there um, it's free it's just on telegram app uh, it's quite fun you even tune in don't you Annika like have a little catch up you don't have to watch it all listen you ain't got to come on there and be like oh I gotta watch the whole day but sometimes you come on there you spend like 10 minutes have a little catch up hear some interesting things you can get involved as well by uh, typing and speaking to us uh, but every week what we also do is now from now on we letting three people sign in for the week and actually be part of the circle so you get to converse with uh, us guys and do videos as well and, co and communicate with us on a personal level so we give that position to three people a week um, I don't know the application process for that I think you just have to follow the main page which is uh, Centre Party Circles on Instagram uh, and then if you follow the Ask Me Anything uh, IFBB uh, on Instagram as well those pages have the information if you want to get involved but it's really cool it's a chance for you to like say get to know us guys uh, on there right now we actually have a Norwegian gentleman how do you pronounce his name? Horvar Horvar anyway he's on there right now he lives in Norway and um, he's basically one of the gang now so it's really cool today training uh, like I said on the previous video we're going to be focusing on uh, mul multiple movements on back today but we'll um We'll, we'll go through this and we'll select three that I think are, are fundamental. Uh, three that if you were limited on time and you could only get in the gym to execute a certain amount of work, um, exercises, those three would be the fundamental three. Um, I'll give you a little pointer now before we even start, a little hint. There's clearly going to be a row in there, there's clearly going to be a pull down of sorts. Um, and then the rest is down to how I feel, but I'll basically put a star next to the movements um, that you should do and definitely need to do. There's certain things that are no compromise that should be done in every workout. Some things like lower back loading doesn't have to be done every session. You might only deadlift or pull from the floor or RDL or um, hyperextend maybe every other back session. Sorry, I'm spitting. I'm excited. Um, but, you know, rows and pull downs, they're going to happen every single session. So, little hint, we're going to definitely do rows and pull downs. So, yeah, we're back at Kings. Uh, we've got some jazzy music going on. Yannicka's here today. I'm training alone as far as I know, but Damien or someone might turn up. And uh, yeah, let's get this done. Same kind of setup as yesterday. We'll talk about things as they go. Uh, other than that, I don't think there's anything other to announce. Beanies are back on site, even though this isn't one of my beanies. This isn't my beanie because it's a Flex Lewis beanie. I'm supporting my brother. He has his own brand, which is called Culture. So if you want to check out his brand as well, go check out Flex Lewis, Culture brand. Good clothing. I wouldn't wear it if it was shit. Um, another one to support, you know, obviously my good friend Anf Bales. He does a lot of the flannels that you guys like. I'll be doing some more flannels soon as well. Obviously it's January now, so I'll start looking into that and try and get something up for maybe February or something. We'll do another limited run. Um, yeah, that's it, really. That's only updates. Let's get into some training and then uh, waffle on as we do it. So first exercise today, I was going to start on the single cable pull down, but two things. Someone was on it. Secondly, also, it's not that heavy to stack. So it's probably going to be wise for me to do another lap movement first, just to get a little bit tired, so that that feels harder than it is. Um, so this bad boy, which is um, an old high, I don't know, people call it like a high row pull down. Um, it's kind of like a hammer strength um, DY pull down, but it has a lot more arc to it. It's not the best, but it's not the worst. And it's very, very heavy at the top. So if you're doing this late in a workout, you won't be able to go very heavy at all. So I would encourage, if you are in the gym and you have this machine, probably do this early on. 
if it's this particular one because it stays heavy throughout. A lot of the, the hammer strength ones drop off, get lighter at the bottom. This gets heavier because the arm's longer, if that makes sense. So uh, we'll do a few sets on here to just encourage a little bit of lat work and then we'll move on to the single arm. The single arm pull down will be my number one uh, movement for essentials. This isn't so much essential, that will be, but I'll highlight that in the video in some way or another, whether I just say it again later or I uh, just keep talking about it and telling you how important it is. But this is not one of the fundamentals for sure. This is just for me to pre-exhaust before I go on to that because R1 isn't overly heavy. Clean up your fucking weights. No excuse. So, uh, simple modification I like to use on this machine, this particular one, not necessarily for all of them. I like to actually take the seat out. So I'll do that. And then the positioning I like to have is, have this at its lowest point. Whatever arm I'm pulling with, I want my knee back. So if I'm pulling with my right side, I'll squat down and I'll rest my right knee and I'll wedge my left knee under. So that way I'm creating a good amount of distance between my hip and my arm. And then I'll pull pretty much down straight rather than behind. Um, it's not a, a row, it's a downwards pull motion. So you want to keep your body quite upright and drive downwards like you're trying to put your elbow again into your pocket. If you have your knee up, it doesn't feel quite as good for me. Um, I feel like by doing this, I'm going to encourage rotation because you can rotate quite easily with that knee being there. Whereas when your knee's fixed down on the floor, it doesn't really go anywhere. So worth noting. So with particular movement pans, if your hey honey, if if your movement patterns are very similar to or reminiscent to the previous movement, and you've got very warm on that previous movement, there's no reason to do as many warm ups. So for me, I know that this movement is very similar in regards to what I'm working to that movement. I can get on here now, pretty confidently, confidently, if I can hear myself speak, and go in heavy pretty much immediately. So I'm gonna do the stack off the bat because I've already kind of primed myself from that previous movement. Obviously, it'd be very different if my previous movement was a row or uh, uh, a deadlift, but if I've already done something where I'm pulling from above and trying to uh, target the lats, They've got plenty of blood in them, they're very warm. I'm pretty much good to go. So don't waste time in the gym if you're able to not waste time in the gym. All right. One set all out. On upper body, it's a little bit different than lower body. Yesterday we did um, two sets on most things. On upper body, I tend to do one now, I've pulled back a little bit. Um, that's just part of the new plan. We'll. Um, change that as time goes but for now because there's slightly more movements on the upper body we've kind of encouraged the idea of doing only one to two sets mostly one set so the good thing about that is that when you go into an exercise if you only have one set then you should be triggered to work hard because you know that you've only got one opportunity to make it count so um, if you're someone that's still trying to learn how to be intense it might be a good idea in fact to actually limit the amount of sets you do so that you can commit harder if you're told on your plan you've got to do three sets it can be quite off-putting and a lot of people hold back because their fear of having to repeat an amount of workload, I suppose. So if you're that person and you're struggling to find intensity, try and limit things back a little bit and just try and give a little bit more to what you do do. Lovely. So we're going to do a stretch now. So after you finish your pull-down movements, portion of your back workout, I'd encourage doing a, a vertical stretch for 90 seconds before moving on to your row movements. So we'll find somewhere, probably do the Alico uh, squat rack and we'll just hang for 90 seconds, body weight, let them lats stretch out a little bit before we move on to our row portion. Beautiful. About as, big as, a about, as about as tall as a squat rack. <laughs> this one's not quite as big as the Alico, but it's still pretty tall. Five foot 11, five foot 11 guys. Five foot 11, probably 278 pounds in a minute. I haven't really put much weight on since the show. Been relatively sensible. 
Um, obviously having a few treats here and there, but uh, not my normal ridiculous self. Normally I'd be 300 pounds by now. We're gonna move on to a, um, a chest supported. We're not gonna do a chest supported T-bar row today, in fact. We're gonna do a single arm chest supported plate row. Plate row. So we're gonna use one that pulls down. This row that we did there, naturally what happens is when you pull, you pull up. Now we wanna encourage a row that pulls down just to try and focus more on the lower lat. So that would definitely be one of my um, go-to movements still. Um, again, you can trade that in like we said yesterday with a squat for legs. That could be the, the SSB or it could be the hack. As long as it's a variation, same with row. You need to make sure you include a row variation that is chest supported in your workout somewhere. That would be my opinion. So this is gonna be our chest supported variation today. You'll recognize it from blood and guts. Looks like Dorian Yates old hammer row. It's a pretty good movement, so we'll try that. Big, big kit's older than me, this one. The seat doesn't go quite as high as I like, so you have to kind of sit down a little bit or have your hand a bit lower. So yeah, we only need one warm up on this. Three plates will be probably enough, three, three and a half. It's, uh, it's quite heavy. You'll notice with this particular movement, a lot of people do the, a variation where they stand away from the machine and pull down. So they take themselves out here. And the reason they're doing that is because they want some drop off of the weight at the end of the movement to get short. So obviously when I'm really close to this pad and I'm pulling up, my weight, that arm will finish at a 90 degree angle where weight is at its maximal load. If I stand back and pull to here, once that weight tips over that 90 degree angle, it starts to give you help. So it actually makes it lighter. So me doing this particular form and pulling to here will make the second portion of the movement lighter, but the first portion heavy. Whereas the way I'm doing it now, up close and personal, it's heavy throughout the whole movement. In an ideal world, at this point in the workout, it would be good to have something that has some slight drop off, but I don't like relying on drop off from standing in an unstable manner. It just doesn't feel that good to me. So today I'm just trading a little bit of drop off for stability. Cause I want to use the chest supported for the stability factor that you get from being chest supported. If I'm here, it's not chest supported. Um, that is another movement in itself and it is definitely something that you could do and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, the only thing I would say is I see a lot of time people doing it and squatting down and like pulling that to here. That's no good. Your body needs to be upright chest high, pulling down here. So you don't want to be sinking your body because that's you just pulling to get it down for the sake of it. All right? So bear that in mind as well, guys, because it will help you in the long run when you're trying to develop your back. The more workouts you spend doing that, the less you spend doing that, the less back you're going to have over all the years of hard work. You're still working just as hard trying to do this, but you're wasting energy. So make sure when you do do that standing variation, you create some distance, chest up, and you pull down into here, okay? It's fucking hard still. It'll be tough because that felt heavy and that was the easier way. <laughs> so on here, being a row movement, second row movement of the day, if we can get like a six to 10, that'd be really good. That's two of the must-haves in your workout. A chest-supported variation of a row. So, reason being, highlights, stability, um, contraction quality, um, no ego, ego's not involved. And then obviously, the pull-down variation that I said is essential as well. Unilateral pull-down. Unilateral work encourages you to really rein in on what you're trying to target. The less things you have to focus on, the easier it is to focus on it. If you've got to focus on two lats, 
it becomes a chore. If you focus on one, it's a lot easier. Two, there's not many movements to offer that kind of range of motion that the single arm cable pull down will encourage. Um, so yeah, that's two exercises that I would put in your workout plan if you are limited or you just want to prioritize specific movements first and foremost in your routine. I was going to do a row, but I'm thinking maybe we'll do some deadlift. It won't be crazy heavy. Let's go over there. I'm, bro, I'm weak in a minute, bro. Seriously. Oh, I'm, I'm, I need a whole off season to get back to good numbers. Oh, I'm going to do like three reps of this now. We're going to do like a, a, a stiff leg deadlift today. Just because hypertrophy, me and Jordan both agree you get more hypertrophy response from a stiff leg for back. It is what it is. I don't know how stiff my stiff leg is, but I will try to do stiff leg. Cheers, big man. I'm a bit dizzy now. <laughs> There's a few more in there, it felt nice. But very, feels very good as a posterior chain movement. So that is number three of your go-to movements. Pull down, single arm. Chest supported row that encourages targeting lower lat. Stiff leg deadlift, which is just all over posterior emphasis. And there you have it. If you do those three, I guarantee you'll see some development. Obviously, if you can do some more stuff, great. But if you're pressed for time and you only have an opportunity through three big movements, those would be my three. And uh, yeah, that's it really, guys. I'm going to finish off with a little bit more. I've got to do some rear delts. So I'll do uh, normally one exercise of rear delts and some abs. So stay with me for the journey. But we're done on the part of exercise selection for you. <laughs> the rest is just me doing some fluff. Nothing really to say other than that the workout was a good one. And I hope that I got the points across that we're trying to raise today. Not as much to be said today as yesterday in regards to like life, because quite honestly, we said a lot yesterday. Um, if you wasn't aware, I did just sign a deal with Gasp. So I just want to say thank you to Michael uh, for, for believing in me and taking me on. Um, but other than that, Shout out to all the sponsors below, Tough Wraps, Gasp, uh, Yamamoto, Iron Monkey Wear, you know, all the guys that look after me all year round with all my bits and bobs. Um, as I always say, please throw a sub to the channel, it really does mean a lot. Um, it's kind of all I have, like I know it sounds silly, but I'm not really a materialistic person, I don't really care about possessions or anything, but I really do appreciate the support. So it goes a long way. Join me on Twitch. Most weeknights, 8 p.m. onwards, most weeknights. Playing some Warzone, playing some other games with the boys. And um, yeah, man, I hope you have a great day, whatever you're up to. And uh, we'll see you on the next one, which I don't know what we're going to be doing yet, but me and Maddie will bump heads, come up with some ideas, and put together some good content for the next one. God bless you guys. Love, take care. And now we're going to fade out with me doing the boring movement. <laughs>